I have a little presentation to start with, but you know uh, what I like to do during webinars, and that's not give uh, very long presentations. Uh, this one is about five slides, and after that we'll take a look at the actual product. So today we're talking about uh, FileTrain, and FileTrain is a solution from uh, Laidback Solutions. Uh, that's a Swedish company uh, with a very laid-back attitude, as the name implies, um, that uh, has been active in graphic arts since 2002. And uh, on this slide, you can see a, an overview of the products that they have. If you haven't looked at their site or at their products, um, I uh, would encourage you to have a look at not just FileTrain, but also the other products. I don't want to go into uh, too much detail, but basically Feedback and Sherpa are products that work with the metadata and allow you to work with the metadata that you find in PDF documents in a, in a very clever way, uh, for example. Uh, Colorman is a plugin that uh, will allow you to automate color management solutions within uh, Quark Express slash InDesign. Um, that, for example, works together with the Alpical Claro solution that we distribute as well. Uh, so basically, that would allow you to um, uh, color manage all of the images that you have in an in InDesign document that you're editing, which can be a, a very uh, efficient way of, uh, of working. And then Cargo is an ad portal with uh, built-in uh, pre-flight, of course, uh, again, but uh, a very full-featured and very flexible uh, ad portal uh, built with modern technology. And it's actually also worthwhile looking at it if you uh, receive advertisements from uh, outside or inside uh, that you have to deal with. But the product we're talking about today is FileTrain, and FileTrain is an automation solution. And that should ring a bell. It's not the only automation solution on the market, and I will uh, talk a little bit about that uh, in, a, in a minute. Um, what, do we, uh, what do I call an automation solution, uh, and why don't I call it a workflow? Well, it's an automation solution because it allows you to automate repetitive standard tasks. Typically those tasks that drive people crazy because they have to do them manually and that also because of that cause them to make a lot of errors and errors typically cost a lot of money in a workflow. So FileTrain is a solution that will allow you to automate for example the list of um, the list of tasks that you see on uh, on the slide here. Let's start with uh, what is sometimes the the least popular item, perhaps price. Uh, file train as a product is uh, fairly simple. There is a purchase price, and the purchase price, uh, what well, you can see it on there, it's uh, of course not 2,500 euros, but slightly less. Which I think for the, the type of solution that we're talking about is uh, very reasonable. And it's also an all-in price, meaning that uh, there are no, at least in this version of FileTrain, there are no modules or options. It's uh, an all-in-one uh, purchase price. It's a regular product, so you buy a license for a server. The only thing that you have to add to that, but that's the same for all server products that we uh, distribute is a, an SMA contract, a software maintenance agreement that includes uh, maintenance and updates. And that's always, uh, I think that's now standard for all of the products that we have as well. It's 20% of the purchase price of the product. And the first year maintenance is uh, always required. You can decide to stop that maintenance agreement for uh, later years, although in practice we see that uh, most people simply prolong that so they can uh, continue to profit from uh, updates and upgrades to the product. It's a server license, uh, which means that you activate it on a uh, server, whether a real or a virtual one, that doesn't really make that much difference. And um, if you need two servers, you need two uh, copies. It's actually quite uh, easy. 
and it runs on what you would expect just about uh, Mac OS X, Windows, and Linux. Um, it can uh, run as a 32 or 64 bit version on Windows, for example, uh, and it uh, doesn't require a server operating system. And with that, we mean that you could uh, run it on Windows 7 just as well as on Windows 2008. And as long as we're talking Windows, it can also run as a true service, uh, which means that nobody is required to be logged on to the server uh, to work with the, uh, with the application. So you can see that this is all quite uh, straightforward. And that uh, makes my life uh, in this webinar a lot easier. Positioning, uh, as most of you who uh, are listening to this webinar, I can see the full list of names, of course. As most of you who are listening know, um, I uh, know a thing or two about another automation product, Focus Switch. Um, I also know a little bit about uh, other, uh, what I would more call workflow solutions than automation solutions. Uh, for example, uh, Kodak Printergy with the rule, rules-based automation uh, option. Uh, where does file train position itself towards these uh, other solutions? Well, as you'll see from the, the demo later as well, uh, there is a, a, a much less a graphical uh, user interface. Um, but if you look at the feature set of the product, you'll see that it is a very complete feature set. So yes, we are uh, shooting at those workflows where you perhaps need a little bit less complexity than what you get with RBA or with Switch, uh, where the fact that you have availability to uh, script within the product and so on gives you a very high level of uh, flexibility. But there is a trade-off going on in file training between keeping the product easy to use and easy to understand, and on the other hand, making it powerful enough to deal with the most common workflows. Uh, what we see with all of the products that we, uh, that we distribute, whether it be uh, the XIO products or the Kalas or the LPCAL or the ColorLogic solutions, we see that people are very interested in having these individual uh, solutions, but that in many cases, being able to set up hot folders is just not enough to uh, allow them the flexibility that they need. And if you've followed my uh, webinars about uh, the Tucana solutions, T-Flow production and T-Flow approval, then uh, I think you'll agree that those products are one particular way to, to solve that. They offer a, a more user-friendly user interface on top of what is essentially PDF Toolbox Server, a hot folder-based pre-flight and uh, PDF correction engine. But it's still a limited product in terms of the feature set. File train is a little bit different. It doesn't uh, offer the same a totally finished user interface as the Tucana products do, but on the other hand, it offers a lot more flexibility with regards to the different tasks that you need to do around this uh, pre-flight engine or uh, color engine. And that is things like collecting files from FTP servers, sending out notification emails uh, with a link in it, for, for example, if you want to set up some approval workflow. Um, getting attachments from emails and dealing with those. So all of those tasks that you see happening around a PDF toolbox server or a Zebra solution or a made to print solution, that is what File Train aims to uh, automate. And while it does in that sense uh, orient itself towards the same type of workflow, the same type of customer where you would also see in Focus Switch or the Codec Printergy uh, rules-based automation solution, you can definitely see from the level of complexity and also the price point that it aims at only a segment of uh, those cases. But in many cases, what you can do with FileTrain, and you'll see that, is more than flexible enough 
to uh, do the automation that you have to do in uh, in a workflow. Uh, let me switch to uh, the demo. I, I have it running on uh, on Mac OS 10 here. Of course, like I said, it uh, looks and feels the same on Windows and uh, even Linux. Essentially, what you're looking at is an overview window where I can see a real life view of what is being done by uh, the solution, but that also integrates all of the different configuration uh, options for uh, the product. As I already said in the introduction uh, presentation, there is no visual user interface to design a workflow consisting of different steps that you drag and drop into order. Instead, what you have is uh, one or more stations. And a station is a place where something is made to happen. If I want to pre-flight files, I'll make a station that pre-flights files. And that means picking up uh, stuff, deciding which files need to be pre-flighted, and pre-flighting them. And that is exactly what you find in these other items that you have in uh, the main screen. I have sources, filters, and actions. A source, to give you uh, a very quick uh, summary, a source is a location where I can pick files up from, and that can be a folder on a disk, it could be a network uh, drive, it could be an FTP server, it could be an email address, it could even be a timed trigger that injects uh, a file into one of these stations. The filter is used to determine which files or folders are picked up from a, a particular source and are handled. If I have a source where I have a bunch of files coming in, PDF, uh, Word files, Excel files, PowerPoints, Postscript files, and I want to handle them uh, individually, then I can make filters that filter out all of the PDF files and then have an action that handles the PDF files. Or I can make a filter that uh, takes all of the folders that uh, are coming in, or that takes all of the Word files or the PostScript files that come in, and then execute different actions on them. So the, the way this works is always the same. I have a station, and in that station I define where my files come from, which files I want to look at, and then what actions I want to do on those uh, files. The remaining items that you see here are more advanced setup. And what I'm going to do is first show you a very simple station so that you get to see how this works. And then we'll look at what other things we can, uh, we can set up uh, in here. So let me uh, give you a, a very easy station. I'll uh, open it up here. You can see the station window coming up. And I have these three other palettes that float next to it, which I can actually hide if that uh, causes too much uh, overhead. And what you see here is a reflection of exactly what I said uh, when I talked about all of these different categories. In a station, I get to define where my files come from, and that in this case is a folder. And then I have a definition of filters, and for each filter, I have a number of actions that are executed. So it's a very logical and a, very, a fairly simple way of setting up different actions that will happen with the files in an input folder of a workflow. How do I define the input folder? Well, if I double click that source, I get to see that a, a source has a name. In this case, I specified a uh, an exact folder on disk where the files are going to be picked up from. I could scan subfolders if I want to. There is a, a configuration of when that folder is uh, being checked, and that gives me a lot of flexibility to, de to decide how frequently this particular action or this particular source should be looked at uh, in order to figure out whether there is something uh, to do. And uh, you have some additional uh, set up uh, such as a safety margin that allows you to 
build in some safety in case a process delivers a file, but uh, that file is not complete uh, immediately. Uh, for example, something that you see when you start mixing operating systems. Uh, a Linux machine dropping a file on the Windows server, uh, you almost always have to wait a couple of seconds to make sure that the file is really stable before you start handling it. So fairly straightforward, this source is simply an input folder that picks up files from a particular location on my uh, disk. But if I go to add source, and I can add as many sources to this particular station or workflow as I uh, want, you can see that not only do I have a folder, I can also check emails. That could be um, a POP3 or an IMAP email account where all new emails that come in are checked and where the attachments are uh, dealt with. I have a, an FTP server that allows me to pick up uh, information from an FTP server. I'll just select that so that you can see what the parameters are that you can set up here. So basically the server itself, a user account, a password, what folder it is picked up uh, from, same safety information and so on. And like I said, I can even uh, set up a timer action where uh, repeatedly at a certain time this station will be triggered and then once it is triggered in the action section I can define what exactly will happen uh, when that station is triggered. So that's the source uh, section where you define where the files come from that need to be uh, automated. And you can see a bunch of other uh, more advanced uh, areas on top. I will come back to the bucket area a little uh, later, but uh, like I said, I don't want to go into all of the technical details of the product at this point. Once you know where the files come from that you want to automate, the next level is these uh, filters. And when I click the little plus sign, I get to add a filter on here. And a filter could, for example, be a filter that looks at uh, a property of a file. And that would allow me to say things like, I want the file name to be uh, filtered and uh, to contain a particular uh, value, for example, or I want to filter on uh, file size. Uh, I want to filter on metadata that is embedded within that document. So filtering can happen either on file type, on file name, on the metadata that you have in the file, on all of these different parameters that uh, you would logically expect to be able to filter on. So if you work with XMP metadata in your, uh, in your company and you want to filter on certain metadata fields, then yes, that's possible. If you work with a file naming convention, as many people do, then you can use that to filter uh, which files are um, affected by a particular action. And because you can enter multiple filters and then multiple actions per filter, this is a, a rather flexible setup. If I look at the existing fil filters and I insert an EPS filter, for example, I could uh, make two filters in this particular station where I say, well, let's change this one to um, file name contains uh, a PDF. And then for PDF files, I now am going to insert XMP into the file and then do some other tasks. For EPS, I want to do something different. And I could set that up that in the case of an EPS file, a PDF toolbox is used, for example, to convert that EPS into a PDF uh, document. So once you have the filter set up, the next stage is to decide for those type of files that have been filtered out, what are the actions that I want to execute? And let me uh, just open the XMP action in here, which is a fairly uh, straightforward one that tells me whatever file is filtered out and is being handled, I want to add different XMP fields uh, in that uh, document. So this will actually simply add XMP information to the document that is being processed, which you could use for all kinds of different purposes, for example, of course, but for example, you could say, 
any file that is processed through this particular workflow, I'm simply going to add an XMP field to remember that that document was uh, processed. Of course, I can have a list of actions that are executed one after the other, and in this case, the second action will then uh, move the file to an output folder, and then there is a variable part, a subfolder that will automatically be created, and that subfolder in this case simply gets a, an XMP field out of uh, the XMP information in the file. Now, this is a demo flow. What I'm doing here is inserting XMP data and then immediately using that XMP data to create subfolders in many workflows. Of course, the XMP would already be in there and you're simply using what a different tool has been inserted. But this is, like I said, a demo, a demo workflow to show you what the possibilities are. Now, what does that mean? What does this thing do? If I go to live view and I would uh, go to, I would take a PDF file and then drop that into one of these folders that I have. We were looking at uh, this station uh, here. You can see that as uh, soon as I put something in there, uh, it was actually too quick to show it in the user interface itself. As soon as I put something in here, it picks up that file. And what it did is it inserted an XMP field in there for XMP nickname uh, that happened to be Purple Penguin. And then it created a subfolder based on that XMP field and where it stored the file inside of that subfolder. So very simple, uh, very straightforward uh, thing to do. The reason I could insert that XMP information is because uh, a lot of the default uh, XMP encoding, such as the Dublin Core uh, information, for example, is known to file train. So it knows what the, the typical Dublin Core namespace is, and it knows how to deal with that. If you want to add your own uh, XMP information, then you can do that as well. And I have one example in here that defines a field out of the uh, Gantour group add ticket. And if I look at that, what that does is it basically defines the full URI for that uh, specification. It defines what the namespace prefix is that is used by the add ticket specification. And then it defines the name and the human readable name of the property. So if you have your own XMP specification that you use to store information in a, a PDF file or in any file that supports uh, XMP, then uh, FileTrain allows you to enter all of those uh, definitions, all of those fields in its user interface. And from that point on, these actions that work with XMP are then uh, able to uh, use those XMP definitions. So that's what you find under customized XMP. The same, of course, is true for customized uh, IPTC, uh, where you can again define your own uh, metadata, IPTC metadata in this case fields. SMTP servers is a, a logical one. If I want to uh, send out email, uh, I need an SMTP server to do so. And uh, this area simply allows me to define these SMTP servers uh, that I want to use. So what I've done here is simply set up the one that we use here in the office uh, to make sure that I can send notification emails if I want to. And then the last section in here, uh, external tools, uh, gives you an overview of uh, the different external tools that uh, FileTrain connects with out of uh, the box and that are also installed. For example, what you can see here is that it has uh, EXIF tool that it uses to deal with uh, XMP information and EXIF information. It has image magic uh, installed and it knows how to automate that so that uh, I can use that to uh, do all the things that image magic can do with, uh, with images, so converting uh, between formats. Uh, resizing, resampling, and all of those things. And it has a link to where PDF Toolbox is installed. And I actually, in this uh, example, 
uh, installation, I gave it a link to my own folder with PDF Toolbox profiles, where those profiles that I have completed and want to use in FileTrain, I can simply export them in there and uh, use those. If you want, but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm perfectly happy with FileTrain using the, uh, the System 10 folder. Uh, if you want, you can also specify a temporary location where uh, PDF Toolbox will store all of its cache information as well. So it knows how to connect to these uh, installed tools, and that means that I can build a station where I automate some of these tools as well. And I'll show, I'll show you one, that, which is a very simple station that uh, works with uh, PDF Toolbox. Again, I have as input method here created something uh, very simple, a folder. But of course, I could put a folder in here and also two email addresses and three FTP servers. You can have as many input sources as you, uh, as you want. After that, I have a filter that uh, now picks up all files because I'm assuming that all files in that folder will need to be handled by uh, PDF Toolbox. So what I'm assuming is that they are either um, PDF files or file formats that PDF Toolbox knows how to handle uh, anyway. Of course, I could set this up differently and say that PostScript files are first converted with specific settings to PDF and so on. But here I do something very simple. All files, there is a pre-flight action uh, according to one of the profiles that I am using. So PDF Toolbox is used to execute a, a profile. Um, I'm asking in this case for a uh, PDF report with comments. But uh, I could just as well that I want an XML file, an XML report. And let me call that report, uh, and it should be XML if it's an XML report. And I can specify what the destination of that uh, report is. I'm simply going to put it in the output folder, but you can see that the action is flexible enough to allow you to put the report wherever you want it to. And that, again, you have these two different fields that determine where that report is going to be uh, sent to. Well, the first is a, and this uh, example should be an existing folder uh, somewhere on my disk. The second part can be variable, and I can use these types of variables that FileTrain supports to determine what the subfolder or subfolders will be where the report is placed. So if you want to automatically create a subfolder for uh, all XML reports, for example, then you can do that if you want to add a variable for um, the, uh, the date, for example, then you can do that as well. This allows you to use one fixed folder as the most uh, simple case, which is what I'm going to do here, but it also allows you to on the fly generate one or multiple levels of subfolders where you put the information. If my profile contains dynamic values, if this is a variable profile, then I can specify the, the values for those variables in here as well. And of course, I can also specify where the result file is stored. The most um, easy uh, way to do this is by simply having two folders. One folder for the case where there are errors, one folder in case where um, there are no errors, only warnings or um, fix-ups, for example. But if I go to advanced, you can see that you actually have all different capabilities or all different possibilities of output separately. And I can simply, for each of these cases, um, have a different folder where the information is sent to. And that, of course, allows you to do things like any file that has been fixed, for example, so no errors but fix-ups have been done, then I want to drop them into a particular folder, perhaps because someone needs to look at them or you want to run another verification algorithm on them. You can do that if you want, but uh, in this case, I've set it up with the simple, straightforward uh, way of doing things. And, of course, uh, if I now take a PDF file and I drop that into uh, the input folder, 
or uh, I take some uh, some more, then it will simply take these input files and process them. And I think in all these cases, I'll actually have success. So my original file is moved by the station to the uh, original output folder. And uh, for uh, all of the files that have been processed with the profile, end up in the success folder. Because I've specified I only wanted a report in uh, the error case if something goes wrong. In this particular example, I get no uh, report. Now, this is the um, this is the basic demo of file train. If you want, uh, this shows you that you can automate uh, tasks that have to do with uh, files themselves, whether it is renaming, copying, moving, uh, moving from and to FTP servers, uh, uh, getting email attachments and processing them, sending back notification emails. All of those basic things are, of course, possible. But if you look at um, an action, and let me uh, open up this um, list of actions that are built into the uh, application, then you can see that it actually goes a little bit further than those simple uh, things. There is, for example, a PDF merge and PDF split action in here. There is the possibility to work with or generate text files. You can insert. Um, XMP, you can add XMP fields to a file, as I've already mentioned. Um, of course, any uh, tool that works with hot folders can be automated, but there is, next to the integration that has already been done for PDF Toolbox, there is also a command line um, action that allows you to automate any command line tool. And that means that anything that I would not be able to do with the built-in uh, PDF toolbox action, for example, I could simply uh, automate by using this command line action and specifying building my own command line for PDF toolbox or any other command line tool uh, that, uh, that knows how to work with files. Uh, if you think about uh, ColorLogic Zebra, for example, uh, Zebra has the possibility to work through command line, so that could be integrated into the application in, uh, in that way. You can see that uh, file train is capable of linking into uh, Cargo. Cargo was the other uh, laid back application that is an ad portal. Well, um, this gives you the ability, you don't have to do that, but it gives you the ability to configure both solutions uh, together. If you have a Cargo ad portal running, then uh, that gives you the ability to, for example, act on the XMP metadata that comes with the, uh, with the advertisements when they are delivered by uh, Cargo. If you want to see that in action, by the way, uh, there is actually on the Laidback Solutions website, there is a download form where you can fill out information to get access to the download for uh, FileTrain, for example. Well, that download form is actually created by Cargo, and the engine that runs behind it is a Cargo uh, engine. And then uh, if you wanted to automate actions at the back end of that, uh, for example, as happens in this case, sending out emails with the download link, then uh, that, that is something that could be organized by having FileTrain look at that Cargo system. So that kind of integration is, uh, is already possible. There is one additional um, field that I want to uh, draw your attention to and that, or action, and that is that bucket action. Uh, you already saw that uh, briefly when I opened up one of the source sources, if I'm not mistaken. Well, actually not here, but if I do uh, create a was it sources of filters? I'm losing my own way now for a second. Where did I show that? When you uh, when you create and actually this is where I uh, where I saw that when you create your own actions or your own sources or your own filters, there is a mechanism to work with uh, variables. And if we go to the file train manual, then uh, at the very end. 
you can see these uh, macro uh, tags, variables, if you want. And these variables allow you to customize any field in Filetrain. That's what I wanted to show and what I was looking for. Uh, we take the pre-flight action again. Any of these fields where you have a yellow background in the field itself, well, any of those fields is capable of working with these uh, variables. And this is an example. The F variable that you see here is actually um, referring to the file name of the file that is being processed. Well, there is a whole list of these uh, variables that you can use to make your uh, actions or sources or filters more flexible. And you can uh, you have documentation for uh, all of them that is uh, very complete. So that can be used to uh, enter some level of flexibility uh, already. Next to that, there is the concept of a bucket. And a bucket can be on a station level, so on a workflow level if you want, or it can be on a file level. And a bucket is, as the word implies, a location where you can store information for either that station or that uh, file. And if I look at one of these workflows that I have here, and that's uh, what I was looking for. So in this case, what I have done is I have defined a station uh, bucket, and I give that a particular name, and um, that has a, uh, a value. The actions that I use in that station can work with the information that is in uh, those buckets. In this case, I use it to create a unique ID that is specific to that particular station, and that allows me to incrementally uh, rename every file that is processed in that station. So in this case, it's information that is connected to the station itself. And if you look at what happens with that information, if I look at the one of the actions that I have in here, then it will actually increment that value that is stored with the station. So every file that is processed, in this case, uh, simply gets an increment, automatically incremented uh, number. It looks a little bit complicated uh, in here, uh, something that takes a little bit used to uh, how these things are written down, but it's a very flexible way of storing information inside of a station, or if you're using a file bucket to store information, with a file. And by doing that, you can have information that flows with a file as it is being processed through file train um, so that different stations or uh, different uh, actions that work on the same file know uh, what that information is, can work with that information that travels with the document. So the two concepts, buckets and what uh, is called uh, macros in file train or variables in, uh, in file train, those two concepts work together very closely in, uh, in many cases. The uh, variables giving you a way to add flexibility to a source or a, an action, and the bucket giving you a way to storing information together with a station or together with a File. Okay, that is about what I wanted to show you in this particular uh, uh, webinar. Like I said, uh, there are definitely a number of examples that I would like to go into in uh, next webinars. Uh, one of those, for example, is an approval workflow where a PDF toolbox is used together with a web server to uh, create a very, a very simple uh, but effective online uh, approval system for, uh, for clients. That's one webinar that, uh, that you'll see appear on our agenda shortly. If you have other ideas or other things that you would like to uh, see in more detail, then uh, just send us an email and I will be happy to go into those as well. Uh, to give a little bit of a, of a quick uh, recap, uh, we talked about file train, an automation solution uh, from Laidback Solutions, uh, very nice uh, Swedish company. 
And file train, as you see it here, allows you to define stations. Each station is a workflow of things that need to happen to particular documents. And for each of those stations, I can specify where the files come from, whether that's a folder, an email, a message, an FTP server, or simply a timer that is being fired uh, every uh, so many uh, seconds or minutes. Every station allows me to define filters to determine which files or which folders are going to be dealt with. And that can either be a naming convention or uh, metadata in the file uh, or any other property of that file or folder. And then any of those stations allows me for filtered out files what actions to define, what actions need to happen on that particular uh, file. And of course, that can be built in actions such as moving files around and renaming and copying and all of those uh, obvious things. But of course, that can also be the automation of uh, external tools. And in many cases, that will be the automation of external tools. Uh, FileTrain knows how to handle uh, two uh, open source uh, tools. Uh, EXIF tool to work with EXIF information and metadata in general, and then Image Magic to work with uh, images in all kinds of uh, ways, and that also connects and knows how to automate uh, Kala's PDF toolbox out of the box. Uh, but any other tool that works with hot folders or command line can also be can also be uh, dealt with. Um, Besides that, there is the ability, and I didn't really uh, mention uh, that too much, but there is the ability to work with, and I'm just looking at whether I have that uh, here, there is the ability to work with uh, databases as well, where you can make a connection to a database, and you have a number of predefined types here already that should cover most of the, uh, most of the needs and where you can uh, either store information in a database or extract information from a, uh, from a database, either by calling a stored procedure uh, or having uh, a plain uh, SQL code, for, uh, for example. And what we see this used for is actually in both directions. It is uh, information that is stored for a file in a database that is extracted and then acted upon. That information can be stored in a station or a file bucket again, so that it's available for uh, next actions to, um, to work on. Uh, but we also see it used in a workflow to store information back into that, uh, into that database after a file has been, uh, has been processed. That used to be, for those of you that perhaps in the past have uh, looked at file train, the database uh, part used to be a separate module, but it's actually simply uh, built in uh, and bundled with uh, file train uh, version 6. So if you buy file train, uh, the capability of working with databases comes with the application. If there are any other uh, questions that you have about the application, uh, now would be a, uh, a good time to ask them or simply send me an email afterwards and I will be happy to give you a more in-depth presentation afterwards, one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. That's, of course, also uh, always a possibility. Let me see if there are any additional questions next to the database question that uh, weren't answered yet, but I believe I've uh, answered all of them so far. Good. Uh, if you um, want to uh, experience file train, there is, of course, a trial version that you can download from the file train uh, website or the laidback solutions website, and that's the site I have, uh, I have open here, laidback solutions. Dot SE. It's a Swedish company. Uh, you have a very nice page for each of the products, including a uh, download of a 30-day trial version. So please don't hesitate. Simply uh, download the evaluation version. If you run into any issues or questions, 
give me a quick uh, email and uh, we'll be more than happy to help with that. Good, that uh, leaves me with nothing else but to thank you once more for joining uh, one of these webinars. As I said before, if you have uh, other uh, subjects that you want to see covered, please don't hesitate uh, to ask. And if you want to see the recording of this webinar or any of the previous webinars that we did, you have that available on the 4P support portal. There is a tutorial section on there where you can see a long list of uh, recorded webinars. Many of them for uh, PDF Toolbox. I think that's the majority of the webinars that we have on here, but uh, webinars for Tucana as well. Um, uh, you can see a PDFA pilot webinar. There are some color logic ones as well. And I know that Tom just did two uh, LPPL Claro webinars that, uh, for which the recording still has to be cleaned up and then posted as well. So those should be available in the coming week uh, as well. Thank you very much for uh, joining. And uh, like I said, please don't hesitate to contact us if you have any questions. We'll be more than happy to, uh, to assist. And then uh, I can only wish you a very nice rest of the day.